Hello everyone, in this video we are just going to walk through the data sheet and the user manual of STM32F446RE microcontroller which is mounted on Nucleo F446RE development board which we are going to use in the future lectures in this course. Let's get started. So for an embedded engineer, you must be capable of or you must be able of reading the data sheet and user manual of the microcontroller and you must be able to fetch the correct memory addresses of each of the peripherals available in that. So on the screen, you can see this is the functional block diagram of STM32F446RE or RC based microcontroller. So here you can see in this block diagram, this section is the ARM Cortex-M4 bus section from where the main buses of the processors are subdivided. There are three main buses. One is the I bus, instruction bus, data bus and S bus. So from these buses, the AHP bus matrix is derived. So this is how the bus matrix is subdivided from the main bus that is I bus, D bus and S bus. So main bus is nothing but AHB bus. I hope I have you I have explained about AHP APB buses in previous one of my video. I hope you watched that and also you have knowledge that ARM processors will be having two kinds of buses. One is AHB and APB bus. So this is the AHP bus in this processor or in this controller STM32 F446RE. And this AHP bus is is directly fetched by the USB peripheral, DMA2, DMA1 peripheral and RAM, SRAM1, SRAM2 peripheral and also camera, USB OTG peripheral. So these are some peripherals which will be running at very high speed that is offered by this microcontroller STM32F446RE. So this microcontroller can run at a maximum speed of 180 megahertz. So these are the peripherals which can run at 180 megahertz. And further this AHP1 bus is provided to the reset and clock control, CRC and also the GPIO ports available in this processor starting from GPIO A to GPIOH and further this AHP bus that is AHP1 bus is subdivided into APB1 and APB2 and this APB2 bus is providing the clock for clock or frequency for these number of peripherals you can clearly see external wake up SDIO timer 1 timer 8 9 10 11 USART 1, 6, SPA1, SPA4, SAI1, SAI2, temperature sensor internally available, ADC1, 2, 3, etc. And this APB2 bus can run at a maximum speed of 90 megahertz. And also the APB1 bus can also run at 45 megahertz. And this APB1 bus is providing the clock for this much peripherals available right over here. You can clearly see. This is running the RTC backup RAM timer 2, 3, 4, 5, 12, 13, 14, USR 2, 3, 4, UART 4, UART 5, SPDIF, HDMI, SPI 2, SPI 3, I2C 1, 2, 3, FMP 1, CAN 1, CAN 2 and also DAC 1, DAC 2. So these are the peripherals that can run at a maximum speed of 45 megahertz using the APB1 bus and these are the peripherals which can run at 90 megahertz speed using the APB2 bus that is provided in the left side of the screen and 
these GPIOs can run at a maximum speed of 180 megahertz. That is the maximum speed of the processor. And also we are having the AHB2 bus which can also run at 180 megahertz which is providing the clock for camera and also the OTG. And now that we are completed with the block diagram explanation of this microcontroller STM32F446RE. Now let us see how can you find a particular register address inside this whole block of this microcontroller. So for that let us assume that this whole block of this microcontroller STM32F446RE as a city. And inside this city, we are having various streets. If there is a city, there will be various streets available in the city, right? So, we are having n number of streets available in this STM32F446RE city. And one street name is GPIO port A, GPIO port B, SDIO, timer 1, timer 8, etc. So, these are all streets available in the city STM32F446RE. In the physical world, each street that we are crossing will be having a particular address, right? Or it will be having a particular name and address. And similar to the physical world, here also we will be having address for each of the streets. For example, this GPIO port A will be having a 32-bit hexadecimal address. Similarly, we will be having a separate address for GPIO B, C, D, etc. So, let us try to find out the address of this GPIO port A as an example. And in a similar manner, you will be able to find address of any streets available inside this microcontroller or in the city the STM32F446RE. So let me just open the user manual. Here select the memory and bus architecture chapter and come down a little bit. And here you can see STM32F446XX register boundary addresses. In this table, every address of the streets will be provided. You can clearly see GPIOA is having the address starting from 0x4002 0000. So the base address of the streets from where the first house of the street starts is 0x4002 0000. And the end address of the street is 0x4002 03ff. So from the address 0x4002 0002 0x4002 03ff the street name is GPIOA that is the peripheral GPIOA inside the microcontroller starts from this address and ends at this address and inside this address we will be having many registers related to GPIO peripheral of port A of the microcontroller. So, let us see in detail about the address of each of the registers available inside the GPIO A port of the microcontroller. So, click on the general purpose IOS chapter and inside the GPIO registers just click on the plus and click on the GPIO register map for detailed addressing of each of the registers. So here you can see these are the registers available in GPIO chapter. So you can see these are the houses available in the street GPIO. So these registers or houses is common for all the GPIO ports starting from GPIO A to GPIO H. So that is why they have mentioned like GPIO X right over here. And you can use these registers for configuring or writing values to any GPIO port available in this microcontroller except that you just want to move to that particular street address. If you want to write data to the GPIO A, you just want to move to the GPIO A address and you want to write the data respectively. And if you want to 
write some data to address that is available in GPOB, you just want to start with GPOB base address. So the first register is nothing but GPIO mode or register which is at the offset of 0x00. As we discussed GPIOA is starting at address of 0x4002000. So GPIOA starting at an address of 0x4002000. So this GPIOA mode or register is at an offset of 0.00. So this is the offset provided as per the reference manual and this is the base address as we found GPIOA is at the base of 0x4002 0000. So when you add the offset, you will be getting the register address that is the particular house address. And in similar case, GPIO type R is the next register which is available at an offset of 0x04. So this x is nothing but it can be anything from A to H since we are having uh, this much registers from GPIO A to GPIO H. So let me take it to be GPIO A and it is provided an offset of 0x04 which means 4. And similarly, we can write write down all the registers that is available right over here. GPIO X speed R is a register which is available at the offset of 0x08. So this is how you can find the register addresses of any peripheral in the ARM Cortex M processor. This is common for every processor. You can see this is available at an offset of 0x08. So the address is 0x08. Similarly, we are having speed or PUPDR and these registers have separate meaning. Each register is having a special purpose that we will discuss later in this course. For now, understand how you can fetch the base address of a peripheral and from that base address how you can derive the particular register address available inside that peripheral using the offset address. So GPIO A PUPDR is a register which is available at an offset of 0x0c. I am just going to write down all the registers now. IDR that is input data register which is available at an offset of 10 zero, one zero, one zero. ODR which is the output data register which is available at an offset of 0x14 BSSSR which is available at an offset of 18 lock register which is available at an offset of 1c
AFRL and AFHRH which is available in our set of 20 and 24. So this is how you can find a particular street inside the STM32 F446RECT and inside that street this is how you can find the addresses of each houses available inside the peripheral GPIOA in the microcontroller. So similar to the streets available in the city you can find the peripheral address from the block diagram of the microcontroller and from that peripheral address you can find address of each registers available in that peripheral using the offset value provided in the user manual of the microcontroller and using this individual address that you have found right over here you will be able to write the data directly to that register that is using the pointer we will be pointing to this address and if we write a 32-bit or 16-bit data as required by the register, that data will be directly returned to that register. So that's it. So this is how you will be able to write data to that particular register available using the address and also retrieve back the value that is available in that register using the memory address of that register. So I hope you understood how to find the base address of a peripheral in the microcontroller and also using the base address how to find the internal register address of each registers inside that particular peripheral using the offset address provided in the user manual. So just practice this and try to find out each register address of a particular peripheral by choosing your own so that you will be able to find the address of each registers of a particular peripheral in any ARM Cortex M based processor. So in this manner you will be able to find out each register address required using the base address from that memory table plus the offset address of that register. So I hope you learned how to find register address of each of the register available in this microcontroller STM32F446RE and please try to find out GPIO peripheral A address of TIVA series microcontroller TM4C123 and then get back to the next video. In the next video we will be discussing about that microcontroller. So based on the vendor of the microcontroller these addresses may vary but the core is same so arm cortex m core is same but the vendors are different you can clearly see st microelectronics is providing the address for gp over a to be 0x4002 0000 but this may not be the same in case of tiva c series microcontroller because the silicon vendor is different so that may start in a different address so you take the same GP over A peripheral of that microcontroller and list out addresses of all the available registers in that GP over port A along with the address. Just for your practice, just keep doing this and get back to the next video. I will be doing that for your reference. I hope you learned how to find the address of each registers in a microcontroller in this video. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.